Hello, hi, welcome to the World of Assessments. Welcome to Principles of Assessments and Evaluation. My name is Amy Zakaria, and this video is developed specifically uh, to the needs of trainee teachers who are attending the course of Principles of Assessments and Evaluation. If you are not my students, feel free. If you are a teacher, I hope that this video will assist you in the process of testing that is highly valid and reliable. Now, the slides which I will be using uh, is downloadable from my MOOC page. I'm going to leave the link to download the slides uh, underneath this video. All right, so what exactly are we going to do today? We are going to look at the most significant aspect of the testing process, which is, wait for it, wait for it, where exactly it is? Ta-da! Biarlah, I'm so rajin excited about salahnya, kan? Uh, test administration. Now, it's D-Day. It's the whole reason uh, why you are developing your test in the first place is to gather evidence of learning that points towards students' ability, which is meaningful for teachers to use for their instructions and their intervention strategies after the assessment. Okay, so if you're wondering where exactly are we or how do we fit within the testing process, we are basically here. No, we are here, not here, here, okay? Uh, after we have constructed our items and we have carried out another process known as test assembly, now your items have been vetted they are high quality instructions have been provided and sufficient number of papers have been printed now we are moving on to the test administration which is why i am here doing this video now right so let's move on uh, when teachers carry out uh, test administration the most important principle that they need to abide by throughout the entire test administration process is to provide conditions and environments that allow test takers to um, accurately present the breadth and depth of their knowledge and skills. So it's all about providing conditions which get students to produce reliably uh, evidence of learning. And in doing so, there are four considerations that teachers have to make when they are administering the test. So we are going to look at each of these considerations in more detail. So the first consideration is psychological considerations physical considerations, reliability considerations, as well as the <coughs> considerations on clarity. Now, if we were to look at these considerations, they are not stages. Uh, all of these are of equal importance. And all of them, psychological uh, clarity as well as physical, are somehow tied up to the considerations of reliability. This is uh, very, very important in ensuring that students are given sufficient um, opportunity for them to demonstrate what they have learned. All right. So we are going to look at them. Uh, <coughs> I'm sorry, I'm still coughing. I'm still down with cold and slightly still feverish. So, so just bear with me. I talk up soup and they show that. Uh, we are going to look at each of these considerations in detail. First, psychological considerations. Now, uh, sitting for a chance is never exciting or thrilling. Uh, when you were students, when I were students, we never, never enjoyed the fact that we have to sit for a test because you have to study, you have to memorize stuff, you have to understand certain things. Uh, and you need to make sure that all of these uh, things are covered prior to the test day. And oftentimes, testing is a stressful experience for students. So as a teacher, as a test administrator, it is very important to provide a conditions or environment that is not stress inducing and reduce as much as possible the anxiety that students may have. Okay, 
uh, just remember that test is a form of formal assessments. And because it is a formal assessment, every single bit and aspects of testing must be planned carefully, sufficiently, and implemented uh, effectively. So I'm just going to turn off my aircon. It's getting very cool in this room. Right. <clears throat> so one important thing that you must do as teachers is please communicate the test date to your students in advance. Now, in order for you to do so, the test date must be selected and planned in advance as well. If you think that it will take roughly about two weeks for your students to cover the content that is tested in the test, then you must at least communicate to your students about the test date or about the fact that there will be a test in two weeks time, okay? Uh, please make sure there is no uh, <clears throat> there is no element of surprise. Uh, don't surprise your students by having a test like surprise. It's our test day today. Uh, never, never do that. You can actually do a pop quiz for your quiz, but you should never do a pop test for your test because quiz is under informal assessment. It is very much spontaneous and impromptu in nature, but test is never, never an informal assessment. Test is always formal. There are scores involved. Hence, it must carefully plan, and you, being a test administrator, must be transparent about the process of testing. Hence, test date must be communicated to your students give them ample time to prepare for the test, all right? Not just to make sure that they are uh, they do have sufficient time to study, but also the fact that they can manage their time more effectively and then they won't experience any unnecessary stress and anxiety, okay? And also very, very important for teachers to check uh, whether the test date uh, clashes or coincide with other events in the school. Imagine jawab test tengah-tengah hari, masa hari, kantin, lepas tu bau burger lalu. <laughs> you feel uh, distracted. I would be distracted, definitely. All right. Uh, some schools, for example, they have mini stadiums. They also have uh, facilities that they rent out to outsiders. For example, there's this one school which I often go for my practicum observation in USJ 23. So this Sekolah Menengah has a mini stadium at the back and almost every day uh, there's an event or people coming to carry out um, programs and activities in that stadium. And there's no other entrance. Um, people who use this stadium have to walk in uh, in the same manner as students and pass by uh, school blocks and buildings and if you are in such conditions, if you are being assigned to teach in such schools, then please make sure that you check the dates. And if possible, if possible, uh, when you do your test, it does not coincide with other events within the school. You don't want the noisy sounds or any form of interference to your students when they are sitting for the test. The third point is minimize interference during tests. There are things that teachers cannot control. Sometimes there will be disruptions and interference. Uh, students, other students will be passing by. They make a lot of noise. Uh, the bell ringing, that kind of stuff is not within teacher's control, so it's fine. But uh, things that you can control as a teacher, please make sure that these things does not interfere or comes into interference during the testing process. I'm just going to go back to uh, the previous slide, this one. Uh, very, very crucial as teachers that you make sure that you have carried out your test assembly process efficiently because any sloppiness uh, that occurs uh, during the test assembly process, if these are not attended to, or are not rectified, it will come back in the form of interference to your student while they are answering the test. Let me just uh, give you an example. For example, 
uh, the instructions uh, in the task is not clear yet you did not rectify this during the task assembly process and during the day during the task administration your students uh, might ask questions for example teacher what does it mean by this uh, teachers i don't understand these questions uh, sebenarnya cikgu nak example ke tak cikgu bagi markah berapa berapa point cikgu nak or cikgu page ni tak clear saya tak nampak soalan so all this which could have been avoided if you do in fact carry out your task assembly process diligently uh, now come back to haunt your life during the testing process i'm sure as students yourself you have experience sitting for an examination examination is even bigger in spectrum than testing and uh, once in a while the invigilators will interrupt for example assalamualaikum and a very good day i'm sorry uh, everybody can you please uh, check page three there is correction uh, these interruptions does not uh, give you a good image as a test administrator because it shows that you are not really prepared uh, to the test hence uh, as a teacher please make sure that your test assembly is spot on and is carried out effectively. And at the end of the test assembly process, you do have a very high quality set of test paper. Uh, and if that is the case, then your test administration will be smooth running. Okay, some of the examples, right? Okay, so let's go back to that particular page that I was on. Um, there are also other psychological considerations that you have to make simple considerations for example uh, being female teachers you do wear high heels and during the day that you will be invigilating the examination for example don't wear heels that make a lot of croaking sound like tick tock tick tock you jalan eh sebab tu dah dengar dah you jalan nak sampai ke meja student during the exam so all these will create interruptions uh, or standing too close to the candidates while they are answering. Uh, student duduk kat situ, you pun berdiri lah macam tu kat sebelah eh. Uh, you don't even look at the student. You are actually looking at other things. It's just that you are standing near the student. Dia dah menggelupo. Uh, cuba nak tutup jawapan je. Padahal dia menjelita tak tengok pun. So all this uh, are basically not very uh, effective. So... <coughs> Be neutral, don't talk to the students while they are answering. Um, kadang-kadang you just nak tanya apa khabar, dah makan ke belum. Uh, save the chit chat to later because uh, in a large setting for, of examination, for example, when you as an invigilator talk to the student or one of the test takers, uh, it does create suspicion on the part of other students like, kenapa dia nak cakap? Dia tengah bagi jawapan ke apa? Tengah bagi clue ke apa? Uh, so be neutral, uh, be professional when you do in fact run um, your duty as an invigilator. Don't stand too close to the students. Um, <coughs> sorry, or uh, don't talk to the students. Uh, you know the how come like carry yourself professionally. Very clear things that you have done even before these psychological considerations apart from what i've mentioned in the slide and in this video is the empathy that teachers have uh, in understanding the psychological state of the test takers and making sure that the process or any aspects of the test administration does not or do not induce fear or worsen this anxiety all right so the second considerations uh, this is physical considerations. I'm sure this is quite uh, straightforward. Uh, refers to the physical aspects or the physical environment during the testing process. Uh, this is very common things that teachers have to go through. Uh, the moment when they decide to have a test, they have to find um, a conducive uh, space to do this. If uh, the school has an exam hall, you might want to utilize this exam hall. But most of the time, teachers do not have any options other than carrying out the test in the classroom, which is fine. Uh, just make sure that uh, the lighting, the ventilation is all effective, all right? And also arrange for effective seating arrangement. 
And uh, this is one of the most important considerations as well. If you are teaching more than one groups uh, for the same course, say for example, you are teaching three groups and uh, these three groups will be sitting for the same test. So you may want to consider um, having one test date and the same test time so that all of these students can take the test together. This is also related to reliability considerations. Imagine that if you are teaching three groups and all these uh, three groups are taking their tests at different uh, time of the day. For example, class A sits for the test in the morning, class B uh, slightly before recess, and in class C in the afternoon. So we can basically assume that students in class C may not experience the same psychological state as uh, the students in class A. It's in the afternoon, they are hungry, they are tired, it's hot. So when you do have, in fact, getting all the students uh, or the test takers sit for the assessment in the same time um, at the same place, we can basically ensure that um, the variables are the same. It's like uh, they will experience all the same conditions. So from the test administration point of view, this is effective. Okay, but uh, having said that, as teachers, we do have our constraints. Uh, we don't have a exam hall or a exam hall cannot be used. And if you have like three groups of students, uh, you alone uh, is not enough to uh, sufficiently invigilate all the students at the same time. So having said this, I'm sure that as teachers, we work within our limitations and find the best solution. All right. <clears throat> Remember that even within the quality of assessment, we have validity, reliability, objectivity. We also have another aspect, which is practicality, right, teachers? So whatever arrangement that works best for you. The most important thing is that your test administration is smooth running. Right, now the third considerations, um, considerations on clarity. Slide test administrator should strive in providing directions so that the candidates are clear of what expected of them. So directions come in uh, two different sources when it comes to test administration. In the test assembly, uh, I've mentioned that uh, when you provide directions to your students, there are three different levels of directions. One is general instructions for the students. So these should be stated on the cover page of your test. Uh, the second one is the instructions for separate section in your test paper. And the third one, the third one is uh, if your items are effectively formulated. So these item will con uh, con contains, my God, instructions as well. Now that is test assembly. If you have not watched my video on test assembly, please do so. Very, very important stage that you must abide by prior to test administration. Uh, but now we are within test administration and the clarity that we are talking about here is the instructions that you give uh, prior or before the test commences. So even though we have provided instructions on the test papers, it is always, always worthwhile to audioly, audioly, <laughs> to verbally uh, provide uh, instructions as well. Okay. And remember that um, when you get students to open the test paper, they will not bother with you anymore because their mind is focusing on the questions. So the best time to give instructions to your students is uh, after you have administered the test papers to each of the students, they are seated down and before they open up the cover page, this is the time to give instructions. All right. So provide uh, a set of instructions for the entire test and very important as well that after you have given out instructions, ask the students do they understand and if they have any questions, please ask the question now so that when they have started answering the questions, uh, they are very clear and they won't be interrupting or asking questions from time to time. Okay. 
um, yeah, you can read this slide as well. And finally, we have come to the fourth considerations, uh, which is reliability considerations. Now, reliability, even though all these considerations are of equal importance, we still have to uh, keep them in mind every time we do or administer a test. But reliability consideration is the most important. This is the first and foremost, the priority that teachers must uh, pay the attention to when they administer tests. So we do want to increase the reliability of the assessments and there are certain things that we must think ahead or think on the feet when, when things happen, you know. The final considerations, which is reliability considerations. I know that I have mentioned that all these considerations, psychological, clarity, physical and reliability, they are of equal importance. And if you as a teacher and test administrators, when you do test administration, these are the considerations that come into play. But if there's one consideration that is more important than the other, it will be this one, reliability considerations. It's very, very crucial for teachers to provide a testing environment and conditions which enable students to accurately demonstrate the knowledge and skills that they have acquired. Okay. Uh, aspects or issues such as quarantine or students coming in sick during the test. So these are all associated with uh, reliability. So I'm going to talk about this from two perspectives. One is you being a classroom teacher administering your tests. And second is you being a teacher administering or invigilating uh, large scale assessments. Uh, for, for example, standardized examinations where you are tied up or you need to abide by the rules and procedures of the schools and examination. Okay, so let's talk about smaller scale first. If you are a classroom teacher and you are carrying out a test or administer a test, then you are a test administrator. Being a test administrator, and this is your test, um, all the decisions about the effectiveness of the test administration is under your liability. For example, students coming in sick or looking very, very sick uh, for the test day, and you have to assess the conditions of these students and decide whether he or she is fit to sit for the test. Uh, you need to understand that uh, when students are sick, they are not be able, they will not be able to demonstrate um, the knowledge and skills as good as when they are healthy. So when students sit for the test very, very sick, um, the quality of the responses may not be the same. Uh, if you assess the students uh, are not fit to sit for the test, for example, then maybe reschedule the test on a different day for the student. It may not be as easy as it sounds because when you have administered one test and then several students are not uh, able to sit for the test, maybe they are absent during the test day and maybe one of the students is sick and you have to arrange another test for the student, uh, it will implicate uh, on the considerations such as will you in fact be able to use the same test paper or the fact that I have administered this test, and now this is the second batch, they might probably have gotten the questions. So maybe you need to prepare a different set of tests for the second batch of students. Uh, that can be just too painful for some teachers to handle, especially when they do have other things in their professional life that they have to look at as well. So, um, when you get students to come for a different day when the student is sick and cannot take the first test, uh, then you need to consider having a different set of tests, parallel form, just for these students. Uh, so that will be the implication. All right, so the second uh, level is the organizational level. For example, if you are a teacher or invigilator for final examination or standardized examination or any assessment carried out by the school district or at state level 
then you are tied up with the rules and regulations of that particular assessment. So I'm going to share with you a few stories. I hope these stories are interesting. Uh, in my professional life as an educator for the past 15 years. Uh, and these stories uh, involved my ex-students uh, because I taught them um, one semester throughout the entire program, uh, this particular course. So when they experience any issues or problems with final exam in university, they always call me up or refer to me. So I'm like a customer service uh, for final examination, which is fine. Okay, glad to be of any help or assistance. I had one student during final examination, uh, she had paper in the afternoon and she called me up in the morning saying that she was down with Daria, like very, very bad. She could not even sit properly. Uh, and uh, she already had medical leave. She went to see the doctor that morning and uh, the doctor issued her MC. Now, I'm sure you know that with MC, uh, the medical certificate, you can show this MC or produce a copy and give it to the uh, management of the faculty. And you don't have to sit for the examination. When the results is out, the status will be um, XX ataupun uh, tidak hadir peperiksaan akhir dengan kebenaran, which is fine. But I'm sure that as students, you have studied for the entire semester. But during hari kejadian tu, tu you sakit, of course, you will not miss or try not to miss the opportunity of sitting for the final examination. So she called me up saying that Puan, uh, I have MC. I'm done with Daria. I have examination in the afternoon, but I want to sit for this examination. Okay, and during that time, I was the pengurusi uh, or the chairperson of the final examination. So every faculty has this post, a person who ensures that the entire process of test administration runs smoothly. Okay, not a glamorous job, but very, very. So I'll just say that, okay, if you want to sit for the exam, it's fine. I don't understand the need for you to sit for this exam. I tanya dia, boleh duduk tak? Tak boleh. Uh, baring, baring, tak boleh duduk langsung, dia kata. So, uh, we um, accommodate in such a way that she sat for her exam in a separate room, not with the common public. Uh, and this room is near to the toilet. Okay. So, at any point of examination, if you do have, just talk to your coordinator or uh, talk to the uh, personnel at the office, we can always come up with the best arrangement to suit your need during the final examination because of this reliability. Okay. Uh, and also cases such as dengue and road accidents uh, because nyamu edis hanya menggigit pada waktu exam, bukan waktu senja. So, kalau bukan waktu exam, duduk dia dalam longkang, tak keluar. Uh, so, it's very common for students to uh, be down with dengue and being hospitalized. Uh, please be informed that uh, if you are being hospitalized and if you are still in the, consideration, uh, in the condition to sit for your exam, we can accommodate in such a way that you can sit for your exam in the hospital right on your bedside, even more comfortable than answering exam in the test examination or test hall. Okay, uh, but please notify us in advance, give us ample time. Uh, we always have uh, invigilators or pegawai peperiksaan on standby uh, to fulfill these kind of purposes. All right, so it, how uh, immediate or what's the deadline for you to notify if you are down with uh, something and being hospitalized and you want to take your exam there. Uh, if you do have a paper in the afternoon, you will only need to notify us in the morning. That kind of short notice. We can still work for it. No problem. All right. You will still have to answer the exam at the same time with your classmates answering the exam in your ITM. But you will be answering it from your hospital bed. No problem. Uh, students that uh, were involved with road accidents, I had one student, he was in fact my uh, practicum um, trainee. Uh, so um, that's why I remember the, this case very, very clearly. So he was involved with road accidents um, and because of that, uh, tulang paha patah. So it was quite severe. 
and she still had like uh, sorry he still had like three papers uh, for final exam and uh, the most uh, like the closest paper was the next day so he was involved with the accidents um, master senior and the paper was next day so when I found out about it so I gave him a call that night but he was too lalo because he was on painkiller so I could not discuss anything I just say okay tak apa I call you esok so the next morning I I call him up and ask whether uh, he was in the condition to sit for the exam and whether he wanted to sit for the exam and he said tak boleh puan saya memang tak boleh so it's fine uh, you just need to produce uh, a letter from the doctor saying that you have been hospitalized uh, and give this letter to the management of the faculty and when the results is out in the system you will be uh, registered or your result will come out with the status of um, well, tidak hadir for perasaan dengan kebenaran, no problem eh? uh, and then you have to sit this subject again next semester right uh, he managed to sit for uh, the other two examinations in the faculty uh, at first I just um, prepared like the first table in the exam hall uh, but he took like 30 minutes just to get out of the car so uh, on the wheelchair tolak masuk pejabat dan jawab soalan exam di situ so if you do have any problems uh, do not keep it boiling down inside please talk to us uh, we can always come up with an arrangement to make sure that you are still able to sit for your final examination okay <sighs> i don't even have to say the word cheating uh, this is also uh, very much related to reliability because when students cheat then the answers that they gave is no longer an accurate representation of the knowledge and skills uh, hence it tainted the quality of the responses provided in fact when students cheat these uh, the response that students provide uh, should no longer be used as credible evidence of learning so as test administrator very very important to consider uh, cheating as one of the things that you must work towards avoiding and provide conditions for test administration that would prevent students from cheating okay so cheating comes in so many forms and strategies and techniques uh, sometimes cheating involves them telling answers to their classmates sometimes they bring in notes or toyo to the uh, exam hall uh, so as task administrator, you need to consider this in advance and then try to make sure that you have sufficient invigilators to make sure that uh, monitoring is always in practice uh, or as, at least like keep on reminding the students that don't cheat, uh, there will be severe punishment and that kind of stuff. I do have in fact a lot of interesting stories when it comes to cheating but uh, this online mode of delivery not gossip much of the best so let's have a cup of coffee later and then we can talk about this and you know like titi atiti gitu there are several tidbits or interesting uh, instances that uh, i want to share with regard to the measures undertaken by our counterparts in china so china a country of billions of population uh, there is one standardized examination uh, known as college entrance exam and this is nationwide uh, standardized examination if you want to enroll yourself in colleges for tertiary education you have to sit for this examination first uh, and uh, it's quite common for the candidates to cheat so one of the measures that have been undertaken by the test administrator of this examination is to prevent students female students from wearing wired undergarments because they have caught and quite uh, rampantly uh, students sit for the exam but they communicate through a telecommunication device with other people outside to get the answers so at one point this was done uh, very very impressive okay however maybe it was not working so well so another measure was undertaken uh, through the use of drones so in college entrance exam uh, three years back 
drones were used to survey or to do surveillance uh, while the candidates are sitting for the examination. But maybe drones were not as effective. So the most common measure was to enact a law. So it's a law in China now that if you are caught cheating during college entrance exam, you could be jailed for up to seven years. So that's how severe uh, or extreme the measures that China, that China government has undertaken in order to ensure the reliability of the college and transit. We're going to look at one more topic under this test administration, which is online test administration, uh, particularly very, very important and relevant during these trying times with the movement control order and the enhanced movement control order, social distancing, uh, pandemic, schools are closing. Everything is done remotely and same goes with uh, PDP or teaching and learning activities, uh, the online distance learning and also the online test administration. Uh, we still abide by the same considerations with conventional test administration, but please know that when it comes to online assessment, it does require more work on the part of teachers uh, in relation to planning and implementation. Okay, it does sound a lot of fun. Uh, it will somehow appear very much appealing to the candidates or test takers, but it does implicate on more work on the part of test administrator, which is fine. Uh, still, we still work towards providing conditions uh, that basically allow the students to demonstrate accurately their knowledge and skills. The same uh, guiding principle still applies to online test administration. Now, in addition to the four uh, existing considerations we have uh, for psychological considerations, physical clarity and reliability, uh, when you are administering your test online, there are additional three considerations that you have to um, exercise, okay? Technical capacity, planning and implementations as well as support. So I'm going to go through this particular subtopic very, very briefly uh, because uh, you guys are not um, full uh, full service teacher. Yeah. You guys are not in service teachers. Uh, you are training teachers and when you carry out uh, your testing, it will be part of the major project so it does not require as much considerations but please be informed that when we do online uh, test administration it does require more and we have to have more considerations in um, the process of administration okay so basically uh, these slides are divided into two sections one is the consideration that teachers have to make for themselves as teachers or test administrators and the other one are the consideration that teachers have to make uh, thinking about the students, not think, not students thinking about themselves, but the consideration that teachers have to make about students under the same topic, okay? So the first consideration is technical capacity. Uh, basically, for the teachers, they first must assess their own state of knowledge and skills. Do they have sufficient knowledge to carry out online tests? Uh, do they have uh, knowledge or skills to log on into online means? Um, do they have the skills to administer the test online? So you as a teacher, you need to assess yourself first. Uh, we do want to provide to the best uh, test administration using using the best online platforms, but do we have in fact have the skills to operate this platform? So that's the number one considerations. For me, for example, there's a lot of things that I learn that I may not have learned if not because of this PKP or MCO. Uh, I learn how to make video. I learn how to download video uh, or upload the video on YouTube channel. Uh, I know I learn how to edit this video. I learned how to do QR code. There are so many things I learned uh, because of these immediate requirements to carry out um, my 
PDP online. So I guess uh, there's no shortcut to this if you want to do online tests and if you don't think you have the sufficient skill set to allow you to do this, then learn. Okay, sign up for an online course, get someone to show how it's done. Uh, I'm sure your colleagues are very much helpful if you're asked, they're able to help. Uh, read, look at notes, look at review on the internet, which platform works best. So learn all these things up, right? So, uh, and then only you can accommodate and administer uh, the test administration process effectively. At the same time, thinking about your own technical capacity in light of your knowledge and skills to allow you to carry out the test online. You also need to think about your own, uh, your students' ability. Uh, do they have the skills that allow them to get online and answer the test online? So please get information about your students as well. And secondly, you also have to assess your, your current state of readiness in terms of the facilities, equipments, and also the related gadgets that would require that you would require in order to get on online test platform. So if you do in fact have all this, then well, that's very good. You can straight away go and administer your test. Uh, in light of making YouTube video, for example, I found that uh, my microphone was not working effectively. So I get this during MCO, this microphone. Uh, so if you don't have any particular equipment, so get one because these are vital parts in making sure that your test administration can run smoothly, all right? And also very, very important as well, checking or obtaining information about your students' equipment. Uh, do they have laptop? Do they have computer? Uh, if not, then, then can they assess your online test using handphone? Um, do they have uh, stable internet connections? if they have to sit for the test for one hour, 30 minutes, for example. So will their internet connections last them that long? Uh, so all these are very, very important considerations in order to ensure that your test, your online test uh, is carried out uh, or administered effectively without interruptions. So you still have to think about physical considerations. There's no interruptions and no interference during the online test administration right so the second thing is in addition to technical capacity the planning and implementations for your online test is also very very crucial uh, you need to check and decide which platform uh, that you need to use that you want to use for your online test and for example, do you have access to it? Uh, and also the fact whether students have access to it, uh, are they able to uh, online or get online into this online platform? So it's very important that you check this, this first and whether you would run your test synchronously or asynchronously, uh, will you be dropping the test in Google Drive or social media, for example, and students answer and submit at the same time? or maybe they are given 24 hours uh, to submit. So think ahead and this must be decided before you can actually run your test. And also the fact that when the test is done online, students have uh, access to all these millions and millions of web pages. So chances are the responses provided to your test could be just a direct copy paste from internet sources. So uh, then plagiarism um, is something that you need to consider and also uh, the authenticity of the responses provided by your students. So think in advance whether do you want to have this test as an open book manner. For example, they answer your test, but if they want to refer to uh, internet sources, it's fine. Because if you say it's not fine, they might end up referring to them as well because you don't have control over uh, the access online during the test period. So uh, whatever decisions that you have, this will need to be thought ahead, even in the planning process, uh, when, they are when you are preparing your table of specifications and when you are constructing your items, 
if this is in an open book test, so the items might be entirely different item than a normal conventioning, normal conventional testing. Okay. Uh, mechanism of implementations. Uh, you have to think ahead. How will I go about uh, getting this test administered? Um, and it's very important still that you have to communicate to your students how you will be administering this. Will you be sharing the test file in the Google Drive? They access and they answer. Uh, what will be the manner that they submit back the responses to you? Will you be using any of the online platforms and like type the questions on the platform and then just submit using the feature on that particular app, for example? So all these have to be decided earlier on prior to the test administration. All right. And of course, uh, the consideration on authenticity. Within the online environment, authenticity is very important to make sure that whatever responses that you get at the end of the test administration, these are reliable responses by the students. Okay. So uh, always, always important to make sure that uh, there's a mechanism which allows you to check for the test taker's uh, identity. Is it really your student who's answering the test or could be like his sister is taking the answers for the student, uh, for example, as well as the authenticity or originality of the responses provided. Is it really their responses or are they just copying and pasting from other sources? So whatever um, mechanism or decision that you have come up with your test online, make sure that these have taken into consideration the aspect of authenticity and measures have been undertaken to ensure that the responses provided the evidence of learning obtained is authentic. Okay. And finally, support. Uh, so this is uh, also a crucial um, <clears throat> consideration and also things that teachers must practice provision of support when you are giving your test online. This is similar to the manner of conventional setting when teachers are carrying out the test. Uh, he, he or she is always around, uh, moving around, walking about the classroom during the test and also attend to any questions, go to students if they have any queries and answer these questions and make these doubts that students have about the questions or instructions clear, right? But when we talk about online environment and online testing environment, uh, the perceived support and the provision of support is very important. Uh, you must be able to think in advance about alternative method to your test administration. What will happen if suddenly when my students have halfway answered the questions, uh, he's being disconnected, okay? Hey, you cannot even submit the test answers, for example. What happens if uh, students uh, do not, cannot download the test papers or students have answered the whole test, but somehow the file went missing? So all these are important considerations uh, that you must act upon and think ahead and come up with alternative plan prior to the test administration process. So it does require a lot of work on us, guys. But if you want to do your test online, plan B is very, very important. Okay. It's very common. Uh, I did have student uh, who experienced difficulty answering her test question because she could not download the test paper. So what I did was I copy paste every single questions and share the questions directly on WhatsApp. And then she answered on WhatsApp. And then uh, at the end of the day, I'll just compile all her, her responses on a piece of a Microsoft Word page and then save as a Word document. So um, if students experience difficulty in submitting, so I give a standard amount of time, uh, it's okay, no problem. If you have difficulties, uh, you can actually submit much later than the rest of your classmates. So all this reassurance is very important because when students sit for online test administration, the frustration is more 
when they are not able to download or when they experience technical hiccups or disconnections and any other things within the same realm. Uh, the feeling of helplessness, uh, the feeling of anxiety, the feeling of frustration is much worse in comparison to traditional setting of test administration. Hence, when you are providing or administering tests uh, online, <clears throat> make sure that you yourself are available throughout the entire pre uh, process of this test administration because support and perceived support on the part of the students that you are giving is very important to reduce the anxiety that they have. Okay, right. So of course, online administration does come, uh, online test administration does come with its own set of challenges, but just like any other things in life, when you want to do something that's always optical, so grab life by the collar, <laughs> Uh, then persevere and inshallah things will run smoothly. Okay, so uh, basically that's what test administration is all about. There are considerations that you must practice. Okay, this is also another form of distraction when you are working from home. These little ones is always around to Ooh, disrupt. Okay, I'm just going to uh, pause and I'll be right back. Mm -hmm. All right, my dear students, before I conclude uh, the lesson on test administration, I just want to go through very quickly the uh, test administration section in your media project. So you can refer to the assignment sheet uh, when we are going through this uh, and when I'm going through this. So with the scenario that we are in uh, the pkp the mco social distancing schools are closed uh, there's a high potential that you will be administering your test online and not through the conventional means so if you are doing your test for your major project online um, you do need to explain this uh, experience of carrying out online test administration in 4.0 in your report for test administration. So basically under 4.0, if you were to refer to the assignment sheet, 4.0 in the report is test administration. So under this section, please explain the process that you go through in administering your test if it is online then uh, which platform are you using? How do you go about uh, carrying out the administration process? Did you like blast uh, email to your friends, acquaintances or family members? Or did you send uh, via social media? Or did you share via uh, I mean, like communication platforms such as WhatsApp or um, Google Hangouts, for example. So please explain all of this, uh, the process of your test administration as how they unfold under 4.0 uh, test administration in your report. Okay, I've also shared with you several questions which you need to include under section A of your test, uh, which is demographic information. So if you are doing your test conventionally, face-to-face -face data collections or test administration, you don't need to have section A for demographic information. This is only for those who are carrying out the test administration online. So have section A, demographic information. I've shared with you the items that you need to include, such as the age, the status, either they are students or they are working, and if they are working, then what sector they are they, that they are working in, as well as the highest academic qualifications. Now, this demographic information is very important that you use them when you are defending your uh, level of difficulty of the items in item analysis. Remember that uh, we have done exercises on item analysis and in your major project, the final sections of the report is on item analysis. And in item analysis, there are two types of analysis. One is difficulty index and the other one is discrimination index. 
So this particular demographic information is directly linked to your difficulty index. Um, if for in fact you have developed your items for uh, form five students, say you are art teachers and you have developed uh, art questions for form five students, uh, and the ones who answer your questions are all working people, for example, and they sort of happen to be working in art related sectors. And when you carry out your item analysis, and when you look at your item, uh, the indices of the difficulty, it will appear as if that you did not target the level of difficulty of your items correctly. And it will appear as if that all your items are too easy. When in fact, you could have come up with questions that like perfectly targeting the ability level, but because the ones who are answering your items are professionals in arts, for example, then your item difficulty indices will indicate that your items are too easy. Okay, so this is the part where in the argument of your item analysis, you use the information from the demographic information to counter back or defend your items in terms of level of difficulty. You can say something like, uh, we believe that we have developed the items to the best of our abilities, targeting Form 5 students with content and difficulty levels that are appropriate with the uh, ability levels of the students. However, given the fact that the test was administered online, and uh, most of the respondents or test takers are professionals within the age range of what to what and the familiarity of the content. Hence, based on the item difficulty indices, it appears that our items are too easy. So you can just use this information uh, to counter argue about the ability levels, sorry, difficulty levels of your items. Okay, so this demography session is important for online test administration because you do not have face-to-face -face interaction with the test takers. But if you are carrying out your tests face-to-face uh, -face through conventional means, you still need to explain this process in test administration 4.0, the manner in which you go about getting people to answer your item. For example, those who answer your items are your relatives uh, who came to your house during Hari Raya or during open houses or during uh, great and mingle sessions with your family. So just explain uh, and describe the process of test administrations, the way that they unfold. Uh, if you go from house to house of your neighbors to get them to be your respondents. So just explain that in the test administration. Uh, just explain the way that it happens, okay? Uh, no camouflaging, just narrate back uh, the process of your test administration. And given the fact that you know who are your test takers because of these face-to-face -face interactions, you don't have to have information of demographic as a section in your test, but you do need to describe under 4.0, who are the test takers, how old are they, who are they, are they working uh, professionals, are they housewives, uh, are they a mix of both, uh, just explain who your respondents are, and then use back this information when you are discussing the difficulty level in your item analysis. Okay, so I hope that this explanation of mine would be helpful in the process of you getting your report ready. <sighs> Finally, we have come to an end of this particular session. Uh, so in this session or in this video, we have looked at test administration. And test administration is basically the day where you get people or your students to answer your test questions. And the guiding principle is that you must provide as a teacher or as a task administrator environment that will allow students to accurately represent the knowledge and skills, as well as we have looked at four considerations in task administration. Uh, we have psychological, physical, clarity, and reliability. So these all four things come into play when we administer our tests. And 
if you are administering your tasks online, then there are additional considerations that you have to make, uh, which involves uh, technical capacity, uh, planning and implementations, as well as the support that you must provide your students throughout the entire experience of taking the test. So thank you so much, guys. If you have any questions, please make sure that you drop your comments and questions underneath this video. I wish you all the best for your major project, for all the other courses that you are taking this semester and all your assignments this semester. And with that, thank you and assalamualaikum.